Hey, hey, welcome back for another live workout. I'm excited for this one with you guys today. We're doing intermediate advanced. It's going to be strength training, but knowing me, I can't help but make it a little bit more metabolic too. So we're gonna be pouring sweat for sure, but hopefully with a smile on your face, hopefully you'll feel like your muscles are being nicely stimulated and you can walk away from this quick workout feeling really well trained, okay? So let me give you kind of a rundown of what you can expect with this workout. We're gonna start with a dynamic warm up, and then we're gonna move into a good total body, kind of like, not total body, but more core related circuit to begin with. Then we're gonna grab some dumbbells, do a bunch of work for our full body, and then we're gonna finish with a metabolic finisher, and then we'll cool down all together. I'm gonna see if we can fit this in in about 30, 35 minutes, but that means we're gonna have to hustle. I'm so glad you guys are here joining me, so let's get to work, okay? We're gonna start over at the wall with some leg swings, okay? So, standing up nice and tall, good posture. One hand is on the wall for support. We're gonna swing the other leg forward and back, making sure that your leg is straight, your foot is flexed, Good tall posture, we're gonna do about eight of these. Feeling like your hip joint is starting to get warmed up and loosened up. Let's flip around, do the other side. Stand up nice and tall, swing that leg forward and back, making sure it's not rocking your torso around. Keep breathing. Let's face the wall now, we're gonna go side to side. Out and across. Feeling your inner thigh, outer thigh, getting that nice open dynamic stretch. Let's switch legs. Keep your foot flexed, nice and straight. Big swings and call it good there. From there, standing up straight, feet together, thumbs up. Okay, we're gonna pull them apart, one arm high, one arm low. Pressing your chest through and then round them back together. Do it again. One arm high, one arm low, and together. Getting as much motion, as much action out of your shoulder blades and your rib cage as you can. Let's switch sides, apart, together, apart, together, apart, together. One more. Okay, we're gonna find our bent over position. Booties out behind you. We're gonna sit down nice and deep, fingertips to the floor. Reach one arm up high to the sky, opening your chest up. Bring that hand down, go the other way. Make sure your hips are not moving. You're gonna have to grip with your hip muscles to keep your body, your lower body steady and totally motionless. We're doing two more each side. Last one here, last one there. Okay, climb down on your hands and knees. Let's pop your knees up off the floor so you're hovering in a bear crawl. And then start sending your hips up and your chest back to your thighs, trying to get your chest to meet your thighs. Bring your knees back down close to the floor. Go again, a little higher this time and your heels a little lower this time. Come back down, bear crawl. Send yourself up again. A little straighter with your legs. We're starting to get yourself more straight. Bring yourself back down all the way up in that full downward dog, really pressing your heels down. Come back to your bear crawl, moving a little faster now, finding that full length downward dog. Let's stay up in that downward dog and pedal your feet out, really pressing your heels down to the floor, feeling that nice calf stretch. Let's then step your right foot all the way forward to the outside of your hand, Reach one arm up to the sky, elbow down to the instep, up to the sky, elbow to the instep of that ankle, up to the sky, elbow down, one more, up and down. Next, let's bring that front foot. We're gonna straighten the leg out, sit up tall, hip flexor. Straighten the leg out for a hamstring stretch, Sit up tall for a hip flexor stretch. Do it again. Straighten out. Sit up tall. One more. Straighten out. Sit up tall. Put your hands back down. Set this foot back to where it started from. 
Bring the other foot forward. Reach that arm up high to the sky. Elbow comes down as close to that inside ankle as you can get it. Go again. Reach, elbow down. Reach, elbow down. One more. Reach, elbow down. Now frame that front foot. We're going to straighten out. Sit up tall. Straighten out. Sit up tall. Straighten out. Sit up tall. One more. Straighten out. Sit up tall. And swivel to the center. Okay? Now your feet are wide. Heels are a little wider than your toes. Let's sink all the way back to one hip on this side. Now the other direction. Nice and deep. Let's keep alternating sides. Making sure that your knee is staying back behind your toe. All your weight is going back in your hip. Let's go one more each way. Last one here. Bring your feet together. We're going to high knee jog. Really making sure that you're pumping your arms at the same time. Knees are coming up to hip height. Let's immediately transition to in and out squats. Feet together, drop. Together, drop. 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 Sitting down into that nice squat. One more here. And rest. Take a big deep breath. Grab a quick sip of water. You should feel nicely warmed up. Maybe even your heart rate is going. Let's bring that heart rate back down just a touch. Take a big deep breath. We're going to come down onto the floor in that same bear crawl position that we were in during the warm up. So on your hands and knees, this is called quadruped. You've got four pads, four feet. Okay, tuck your toes under. We're going to pop the knees off the floor so they're only off the floor like an inch. You should be feeling that weight in your quads here. A little bit. Let's actually open the hands up just a tiny bit further apart than normal. Keeping one knee close to the floor but not touching, I want you to extend one leg straight back. Bring that foot back where it started. Send the other leg straight back. Keeping yourself hovering. Then we're going to do a bear crawl style push up. Bringing your knees, your nose to the floor. Press back up. Keep your knees down. Do that again. Extend one leg. Extend the other leg. Bear crawl push up. Exhale and rise. Let's go again. Extend. Extend. Push up. One more. Extend. Extend. Push up. Now we're going to swivel. One direction. Out. Plant that foot. Push and reach. We did this the other day. Should feel familiar. Come back to the floor. We're in a nice bear crawl. Don't let your feet get too far back. Keep yourself tucked. Go the other way. Plant that foot. Lift. Back to the floor. Swivel. Plant. Lift. Back down. Swivel. Plant. Lift. Back down. Go again. Swivel, plant, lift. One more the other way. Swivel out, plant, lift. Good job. Back down. You can set your knees down. Come into a nice, perfect plank position on your elbows. Get your body nice and flat. Firm plank hold, keeping your tailbone tucked under. Big, deep breaths. I want you to tiptoe your feet back as far as you possibly can, keeping your body flat. Exhale and then tiptoe yourself back forward. Make sure you're not piking up as you do these, okay? We're going to tiptoe back again, as far as you can make it, then tiptoe back forward. Keep breathing. Tiptoe back. And back forward. Let's go one more. Tiptoe back. 
and back forward. Set the knees down, let's take a good rest. <sighs> Grab a little bit of water if you can. Those are the kinds of core exercises where you're like, what was I working? Felt like my quads were doing a lot of the work. They were, but if you can do the motions feeling firm and stable, your core is working quite a bit too, okay? Another big deep breath. We're gonna do another set of that. So big inhale, exhale, find that bear curl again. We gotta set up on that bear curl with your hands a little wider apart than normal so that we're ready for the push-up part, okay? If your hands are too narrow for the push-up part of the bear curl, it makes it really, really hard to do a good proper push-up style from that awkward bear curl position. Okay, so knees are hovering close. Extend your right leg, extend the left leg, push up. Extend the right leg, extend the left leg, push up. So I'm really focusing here, keep going, on keeping my core folded up towards my spine, making sure that I'm not arching my low back. Let's go one more. Last push up. Let's go directly to the sit throughs. Plant and push. Let's move quick. Swivel, kick it out, plant, lift, back to the floor. Swivel, kick it out, plant, lift, back to the floor. Swivel, kick it out, lift. These are hard with shoes on, by the way. It's a lot of the time why I like to work out barefoot. Because I just feel a lot of these body weight style motions. I've got better grip, better control over my connection to the floor. Last one here. Swoop it out. Lift. Set it back down. Find your plank position. You're on your elbows. Nice flat body, keep your tailbone tucked. Let's tiptoe as far back as you can. <sighs> tiptoe it back in, keep yourself low. Go again, tiptoe back, <sighs> tiptoe it in. <sighs> tiptoe it back, keep breathing, tiptoe it in. We're going one more, keep your body low, tiptoe it back. Tiptoe it in. Okay, set the knees down, give your legs a rest. We're gonna need your legs for what's coming next. Big deep breath. Good job, you guys. Go ahead and grab a pair of dumbbells if you don't have a set handy. Um, we've got a circuit of exercises coming next. We're gonna be working in kind of a lower rep range, like in the four or five count range, so you could probably go fairly heavy on these. I grabbed myself a set of hang poles. Sorry, that's the first exercise we're doing, it's a hang pole. I grabbed myself a set of 25s, um, which I know confidently that I can do the exercises with 25s, but probably your limiting factor is we're gonna do a military press where you're pushing overhead so if you know what the weight can be to push overhead, make sure that you have that handy. It could be a 20, 20s, 15s. I'm gonna see if I can do the whole circuit with my 25 counters, okay? Big deep breath. One more big deep breath. We wanna feel well rested and ready to go for this next circuit. Our first exercise is a hang pole like I leaked. To you guys. So a good hang pull, you've got your feet in a good squat stance, nice and parallel. The first action is we're sending the hips out behind you like a deadlift. We're going to send the hips out, knees are bent, and we're just coming into the, almost like a shallow deadlift, not as deep as a regular deadlift, just kind of weight at knee level. And then we're going to push hard with the legs and thrust the arms up, okay? So the motion
motion should feel like it's almost like you're yanking straight up, but make sure the dumbbells stay close to your body. Don't let them out away from your body. That could put a lot of pressure on your shoulder unnecessarily, and we wanna keep your shoulders happy and safe. Okay, so you're pulling straight up, keeping the dumbbells tucked in right at your armpits. Finish position is just hanging, and then we'll do it again. Thrust it up, okay? We're gonna go five reps of this, all right? You ready? Five in a row, hinge over, thrust. One, hinge over, pull. There's two, hinge over, there's three. Hinge over, four, five. Okay, set them up on your shoulders now. We're gonna do regular squats. Sit down and up. One, two, three, four, five. Now we gotta push overhead. Woo! One. Ooh, this might be too heavy for me today. Two, three, four, five. Good job. Okay, set your weights down. Keep one of them. We're gonna hold it like a goblet right at your chest. Big deep breath. We're gonna lunge out to the side. A nice side lunge. Push yourself back to the center. Cross behind. Lunge. Keep going. There's two, two, three, three, four, four, one more, five, five. Switch legs, okay? We're gonna go the other way now. One, one, two, two, Three, three, four, four, five, and five. Good job. Quick note on those cross behind lunges, guys. When you cross behind, make sure that your knee opens up a little bit and doesn't just push inward. Let it fall open just a touch. Your whole leg should be at a slight angle I've said it in the past, but I've actually gone back on it, where with a cross behind lunge, you need to keep your knee right, right over your ankle. But I think sometimes when we try that, it pushes into that medial ligaments on the inside of your knee. It's just not healthy for it. So when you're doing a cross behind lunge, let your knee come open a little bit, okay? Keeping your torso up no matter what. Okay. Next, we have a bent over row, but from a underhand grip. So we're coming from behind the dumbbells rather than above them. Make sure that you have good bent over position, okay? Hopefully you know what I'm talking about here. Back is nice and flat, not rounded. Keep your chin tucked. We're gonna row back. One, two, three, four, and five. Set them down, good job. So the thing with a bent over underhand grip is that your elbows slide right along your body a little bit more closely rather than being out at the sides. It's not a bicep curl, you're not pumping your bicep, you're pulling your elbows back. We gotta make sure that your shoulders roll back too. Okay, good job you guys. Grab a quick sip of water. A lot of talking that round. I'm not gonna talk quite so much this next round. We're just gonna keep moving. Let's just do four reps this time, okay? We've got hang poles, we've got front squats, we've got a military press, we've got the alternating side lunge, cross behind lunge. Our fifth one is that bent over row. Let's count to four reps of each, starting with our hang poles. Things should feel a little bit cleaner this time. Bring it to the knees. One, two, three, four. Up on the shoulders, do four squats. One, two, three, four. Overhead press. One, Two, three, four. 
get rid of one of your weights. Hold like a goblet. Side lunge. One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. Four. Switch sides. One. One. Two, two, three, three, four, four. Rows. Okay, get them set up. Ready to go. Come up from behind it. Make sure your shoulders are directly above your dumbbells. They shouldn't be out in front of you. Should be a straight line down. Four rows. One, two, squeeze it back. Three. Four. Set them down. Good job. Once we start moving, it goes pretty quick. But it requires a lot of work out of your body, especially if you chose heavy weights, like I did. <laughs> Big deep breath. Grab your water. We're not done. Let's go again. Take about 10 seconds. If you fully recover or get close to fully recovering in between your circuits, the next circuit is gonna go so much better. There's sometimes a time and a place to do your circuits depleted or kind of in negative reserve or negative energy. But when we're lifting heavy weights and trying to have good technique, you wanna be fairly recovered, okay? So having a good rest in between those circuits, it's good, it's good to do. Okay. Hopefully that gave you a good rest. We're gonna do three reps this time. Going a little quicker now, okay? Hang pulse. We ready? Get your whole body into it. Hinge over. One. Two. Yes, I'm coming up on my toes, by the way. Three. Okay. Up on the shoulders, three squats. Sit way far down and back. One. Two, three, overhead press. One, two, three, get rid of one weight. Goblet hold. Here we go, one, one, two, two, three, three, switch sides. One, one, two, two, three, three. Set up for that underhand grip row. Climb up right behind your dumbbells. Lower your body, nice flat body. Flat back, keep your chin tucked. One, two, three. Step down, good job. All right, you guys, I promised we were gonna keep it quick. It's your lucky day. Instead of going all the way down to two and then one, we're going to move on to the metabolic finisher, okay? So you can get rid of your weights. I'm not sure if lucky day means, yay, you get to do a metabolic finisher now. What exactly is a metabolic finisher? A metabolic finisher is just a quick circuit of exercises that we can tack on to the end of a workout to pull out more from your workout. They're usually optional, but what can be accomplished in just that three to five minute time period is pretty remarkable for your conditioning, your stamina, that cardiovascular output, and just your overall strength, okay? Big deep breath. All right, so here's our metabolic finisher. I know you guys are all wondering what's coming. We've got star jacks, okay? Star jack, you crouch down, jump up, all right? Star jack, we've got push-ups, we've got single leg bridges, we've got fast crossover mountain climbers, okay? If you need to elevate for the push-ups, you can. Put your hands up on something to elevate yourself. 
Otherwise, let's do it on the floor. We're gonna go five reps of each thing, except that final one. The crossover mountain climbers. I want you to keep your shoulders right over your hands. Knee to opposite elbow, but we're gonna do it fast, trying to not let your torso bounce. And the number we're gonna go to on that one is 20, okay? Okay guys, we're gonna try for three times through without stopping. Are you up for that? Try to stick with me, okay? I'll try to pace out a little bit so I'm not going too fast, but see if you can stay with my reps, rep for rep, okay? Star jacks first, we're gonna go five of them. Feet together, crouch down. One, two, three, four, five. Push-ups, five push-ups. One, two, three, four, five. Flip over, single leg bridges. So one heel is planted, other leg up in the air. Push up, one, two, three, four, one more, five, switch legs, one, two, three, four, five, flip over, we've got those mountain climbers, nice and fast, shoulders right over your hands, one, two, three, four, Let's 
Switch over now and we're gonna roll your quads. So come down onto your elbows here. We're gonna go all the way from hip flexors to the tops of your kneecaps. Hip flexors to tops of kneecaps. In just a second, we're gonna dig into that hip flexor a little bit more. I'm gonna show you guys that. Okay, so I wanna show you the hip flexor part. So if you have a Rolga style foam roller, it works great for this. If not, you can use the corner or the edge of your foam roller. And we're gonna line it up just so that corner is right to the inside of where your hip bone is. So you've got a really strong hip bone there, just to the inside of that, it's kind of a fleshy part. That's where your hip flexors run and that's where we wanna get the corner of that foam roller onto. Okay, so you're gonna position your body so the edge of that roller feels just to the inside of your hip bones. To intensify it, make sure that your outside hip is leaning down towards the floor. And a lot of you guys are probably like, ow! Oh my gosh! And if that's the case, you need this. I know I do. This one is kind of a must do if you find yourself sitting quite a bit. We gotta give those hip flexors some love. Okay, let's switch sides. Try the same thing over on the other hip flexor, right to the inner edge of that bone. Make sure this outside hip comes down towards the floor. This release right here, when these muscles can relax and just kind of let go and stop being so tense, often this leads to a lot of low back pain relief. Okay, so if you feel like your back is just always tense and tight, sometimes it's simply because these hip flexor muscles are so tight, it's pulling your back out of good alignment. So that's really helpful here, is doing a lot of hip flexor massage right in that spot. Okay, let's switch to the IT band, right down the edge of the leg. Let's focus more on that spot right above the knee. Kind of those like five inches at that lower thigh. And then let's go all the way up, those five or six inches up at the top thigh. Those are the two sections of the IT band that need this the most. Let's switch over, do the other side now. Low thigh, IT band first. Getting those first five inches right above the knee. This can help ease a lot of that lateral knee pain, that outside knee pain that you sometimes feel with a lot of walking. I know a lot of you guys are walking a lot more these days and running outside, keeping your IT band happy and letting it know that it can stop contracting in between those bouts is really good. Okay, let's go to your glutes now. So sitting on the roller, cross one leg up and over. We're gonna roll in kind of a circular motion on that glute right there. So I know you've been focusing on the rolling, but how's your heart rate? How's your respiratory rate? It's come back down quite a bit, right? The quicker it comes back down to those resting levels, the more fit you are. Your body can kind of recover a lot quicker. That's that cardiovascular strength that some of us really crave, we're like, man, I feel like I need to work on my cardio. And we seem to think that the only option is to just go running. But actually a workout like this, it's really, really works on your cardio big time. Okay, let's finish up with your upper back. Big deep breaths here, feeling your spine, your upper spine right in between your shoulder blades. All of those sections relax, kind of pop, shimmy into place right at the base of your neck, right where we carry a lot of our tension, and our stress is right, right above the crest of those shoulder blades and to the inside of those shoulder blades. Woo, you might feel some knots there. Okay, let's finish with a couple really good stretches and then I'll let you go, okay you guys? So we're gonna go back to kind of something we did in the beginning in the dynamic warm up. So we're gonna find that deep lunge position. You can keep
keep your back knee down this time just so we're not working quite so hard at it. Let's see if we can bring your elbow down on the inside of that ankle. You're going to feel a nice big deep stretch through your thigh right here. Let's inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's go ahead and rock that knee open even more. Feel the stretch on the outer hip a little bit. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Let's bring that knee back straight. We're going to sit up really tall, tucking this tail under. Press into a good hip flexor stretch here. Side bend just slightly. Making sure that your low back has not moved. Inhale. Exhale. A little deeper. Inhale. Exhale. Ease out of it. Straighten the front leg out. Rock up onto your heel. Press your hip back. If you can touch your fingertips to the floor, go for it. If not, you can be here on your knee. Inhale. Exhale. One more deep breath. Good. Put that foot back. Let's do the other side. We're moving quick. I want to get you guys on with your day. Let's go elbow down on the inside here. Big deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Go ahead and rock to the outer edge of that foot. Open your knee up. You might find that one side feels this a little deeper than another. Totally fine. On my left hip, I don't feel this one that much, actually. Let's go ahead and bring it back up straight. Sit up tall. Tuck this back tail under. Press forward. Reach your arms up high. Lean a little bit. Feel that nice long line through your hip flexor. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Go ahead and release. Extend this leg out straight. Nice straight line. Inhale. Exhale. Get yourself squared up. Inhale. Exhale. Go ahead and rise back up. We're going to finish with our thread the needle stretch. Reach your arm really far under. Big deep breath here. Push yourself open. One more deep breath. Go ahead and rise up, reach the other way. One more deep breath. And go ahead and rise up. Okay, you guys, you did a great job today. Thanks for lifting some weights with me. Hopefully you feel strong and ready to go about the rest of your day. Don't forget, we are gonna do another leg workout tomorrow in the Strong Mama Squad at 11 a.m. It's gonna be more beginner focused, so not quite as tense, as intense. So if you feel like you want just a slower pace, more of a focus on technique, not so rushed, that'll be a great opportunity for you too. All right, you guys, thanks again so much for joining me today, and we will see you next time.